All right, this lesson is on nested symbols. Uh, to illustrate the concept, I'm going to do a comparative between stationary symbols and nested symbols and how it is that you use an existing stationary symbol and then animate it and what the advantages are of doing that. Okay, I will uh, preface this by saying that nested animation is probably one of the most complicated um, concepts to understand, kind of like masking is for, say, um, uh, Photoshop or the pen tool for Illustrator. Um, nested symbols is animation within an animation um, so it, it becomes difficult to understand like when are you animating what we call on the surface on the stage in the main scene and what it is when you're animating within a symbol so I'm just gonna show you the difference the stationary robot here it's the stationary robot he's just sitting in place and he's not moving there's no nested animation within him like a hand waving or his feet walking or his eyes blinking something that's continuous that repeats to do that you would require what we call a nested animation within a symbol okay which is like this robot dancing here so uh, to do a comparative we'll look at the robot stationary you'll notice there's no little play button here if we double click on this one notice we're gonna go from the scene here to this robot stationary so we know we're in robot stationary. Notice the robot here is only on one frame. It's standing there, it's stationary. There's no movement in it, and it's just sitting there in place, okay? The timeline doesn't have anything in it anymore. Notice when we're on the scene, this is the main animation that's on the surface. This is where all your movie will play out, okay? So that's on the scene. Basically, there's a difference between the scene and that's the surface animation. That's for things like walking, just moving across a stage, or growing, or shrinking, like one-time deals that you just need to keep your movie going. Let's do a comparative again. We got the stationary. There's nothing inside of it. We know we're in that symbol because we see it here. We're in the robot stationary with its own timeline. It's just the robot in here, okay? If we go into robot dancing, now we're going to go in here. And we can also play the preview here. You see him doing this. His head is moving. His arms are moving. Legs are moving, okay? So he's dancing. This robot dancing is basically controlled by being in the robot dancing symbol with this nested animation. This nested animation here is happening in here. It's happening for two seconds, 24 frames, okay? And then when we place it on here, as long as we place it for 24 frames or more, then it will continually uh, repeat. Now that's this one here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. It's the nested one, okay? And it's standing there and it's in place and it's just doing that, okay? Basically here, nothing is animating. It's just stationary, just appearing on the screen here, okay? But this movement is actually happening within the robot dancing symbol, which is what we have on the screen here, okay? All right, so we have that happening. Now what you could do is, let's do the stationary gliding. That's this one here. It's just gonna move across the stage. That's just the stationary. That means I just grab the stationary object and put it on here and I can make it move. All right, now I can treat the other one, this last one right here, this robot dancing nested gliding. It means it's moving across the screen, but the one, the symbol that I'm using here instead of the stationary one is this dancing one with this nested animation in it. So even though I'm just moving it on the surface here to glide across on the main timeline, I have it also animating with the hands moving and the waving happen because it's in the nested animation. It's in this one. I'm using this symbol, which has that nested animation here. Okay, going back to the timeline. Because it's more than 24 frames, in this case it's actually double, it'll actually loop around. So usually when you place a graphic symbol onto the timeline, as long as I do it for the length of time that the nested animation is, it will play out in completion. If it goes for more than that, it'll loop around and start again at the beginning and continue the process, okay? Notice if I stop it earlier, like here at this time, because it hasn't had 48 frames or double time, exactly double time of what the animation is, it's gonna start at, stop at an awkward state. But if I end it at the very end, 48, it goes back to its normal self because that's how I told it to go in this nested animation. The key being that you start in one way and then you end in the same way so that when it loops back around to the beginning, it flows easy, like it continues and it makes sense. It doesn't jump, it doesn't wiggle, like things are just like going from here to here. It doesn't jump like that. It'll be continuous and it'll go back to the beginning and continue, okay? All right, so if that wasn't confusing enough, I have all these layers on. 
we have a simple stationary object on the stage that's just a stationary robot using that symbol that has no nested animation. Okay, that's that example. We have this robot here, and he's actually wiggling, okay? But he's just stationary in place. You see him only appear gray just like the one above, which means it's just standing there in place. It's not gliding across the screen or anything, okay? And he's using the robot dancing with nested animation of the movement of his hands. And then we have this one here, and this one is just a stationary symbol, which is this one here, okay, using that symbol there, and it's gliding across the stage. And then we have this one here that is the robot dancing, using the robot dancing symbol, and he is gliding across the stage here with the motion tween, okay? Now, a lot of times people say, oh, I'm going to put the gliding, this gliding effect, inside the symbol when I do it. That is fine if what you want him to do is to continuously repeat because at this point in time, about 24 seconds here, which is the time of the nested animation, if you make him glide within the symbol, he's going to go here and then he's going to jump back to the beginning and go here again from this distance to this distance. So he's going to keep jumping, okay? It's going to loop around, okay? So things that you don't want to loop around, like if that movement, if you want that movement to go all the way across and you don't want to just keep looping when it loops, then what you want to make sure that you do is that you do the one-time animations just like panning across the stage or growing large. You want to do that on the scene, okay, on the main timeline, on the main stage, all right? And anything that you want to repeat, like the dancing or the walking motion or the blinking eyes or whatever, you want to do that in the nested animation, okay? All right, hopefully you understand the general concept of this, okay? When to use a stationary animation and when to use a nested animation. Now, to explain to you how these are constructed, um, let me go ahead and turn all of these off. And I'm going to focus on just the nested in place, okay? This one here, okay, which is this one here. Nested in place, all right? Basically, how does this happen? Well, we have a stationary robot with all its parts here, just a drawing, okay? It used to just be a drawing with no symbols in it. We had to create the symbols. Those symbols parts, for anything that you plan to animate, you should create symbols for it. Those symbols are stored in here, okay? All these parts that are going to animate as their own symbols. And then we duplicate the stationary symbol and rename it as dancing symbol, so it also is referencing the parts in here. If we go ahead and we look at it, double click it, it's also referencing all these parts. Then what we do is all these different parts are symbols and when we do that we can distribute them to their own layer and when we put them onto their own layer what ends up happening is that we're able to manually animate all of them, okay? Just like its own timeline. And that becomes your robot dancing, okay? Now so basically we start off with a stationary robot that we then convert into its parts of the robot so that then we can duplicate a symbol into one that has motion and then we animate the parts within it to make it an animated nested symbol. Okay? So to show you how all that is done, we have a practice file here. You can go ahead and practice on the practice file. Right now, I'm going to go into the scene. We'll just see it here visible on the scene for a certain amount of time and we'll notice if we just drag across it, it's not even moving or anything, okay? Because it's just the stationary symbol. And this is what you'll probably have all your drawings be when you begin. As you uh, draw them or import them from Illustrator and drag them into your symbol library, this is what you'll have. You'll have a lot more than this, but this is basically what you'll have to start off with. And when you double click on these, what you'll notice is all the pieces are just drawn in these object modes, okay? They're just a little areas here, okay? They're not symbols yet, okay? The only thing that's a symbol is the main robot, but all the individual parts, which I said if you want to animate them, you're going to need to convert them into symbols. Those aren't created yet, okay? So the first step is that you double click on your robot stationary and you know you're inside of him because you're not in the scene, you're right here where it says robot stationary. So now we're inside the symbol. So here we're looking at the robot that's stationary. So our first step, because we know that we're going to be using this eventually to animate, we want to convert this into its parts that are going to animate into symbols. All right. To do that, we're going to create a folder 
And I like to create the folder just to keep things organized. So I'm just gonna call this robot parts. And in here, we're going to store the parts as symbols that we want to animate. So I'm gonna grab these two objects. I'm just scrolling across with my either transform tool or my move tool. I'm actually going to switch to my move tool. And I'm going to drag across these two here. And now they're selected. It's kind of hard to see, but they're selected. I'm just gonna go ahead and right click them, convert to symbol. It's gonna ask me whether I wanna make this a graphic symbol, movie clip, or a button. Because I want my animation to preview when I view it on the stage, I wanna keep it as a graphic, not a movie clip. I'm gonna name this, I'm gonna call this left arm. And hit okay. I'm gonna do the same for this part. I'm just gonna go ahead and right click them, convert to symbol, the same. Graphic, okay. Right arm, and my registration is already centered so I don't have to worry about that, I'm gonna hit okay. All right, I want his head to be able to move here. And it, I think it grabbed, it looked like it grabbed my, I'm gonna zoom in, it looked like it grabbed my neck here. So I'm gonna deselect that, I'm gonna hold down shift and take that away from the selection because I don't want the neck to move, I just want the head to bop. And I'm just gonna go ahead and right click them, convert to symbol, okay? So you just gotta think ahead of how you want this to animate. So I'm gonna call it head, and then I'm gonna hit okay, all right? I'm gonna keep the body and the neck as one. I selected those two. I'm just gonna go ahead and right click them, convert to symbol. I'm not worried that things are kind of arranging and rearranging themselves because I can organize that after. I'm gonna grab this one. I'm just gonna go ahead and right click them, convert to symbol. Now some people, I called that left leg. Some people call it right leg. They base it on the person instead of how I'm looking at it. I like to name things the way that I'm looking at it. It's up to you. Okay, and then we'll hit okay. And I'm gonna grab all of these symbol parts and I'm going to drop them into this robot parts folder. So we have all the parts. We have a robot stationary. And if you select these, they have this little crosshair right here. These means, this means that this is a symbol, okay? Before it'll just highlight them, but they don't have this kind of bounding box all the way around where it's a symbol. It just kind of highlights the items here, okay? Symbols is where we want things. All right, now this looks a little weird because it went behind. If that happens, I can right click, I can uh, arrange and bring to the front, okay? And here do all these, these are all behind, so these are good. These appear to be all behind, that's fine, okay? Now you'll notice here, there is some overlap here, but there might not be overlap like in the case here. I like to, before I start doing anything, I like to create overlap because otherwise when these things start swinging back and forth, there's some big gaps in here, okay? So you want to draw these with some overlap. I'm gonna just go ahead and push them up and then they're in the wrong order, so I'm gonna arrange them and I'm gonna send them to the back, okay? And now there's some overlap so that when they swing, uh, you don't see them coming apart, okay? So we have the robot stationary and we have the robot parts. All right, here's the thing. People right away jump ahead and, um, and this is just natural, it's okay. I mean, you don't wanna do this, but it's okay if this happens to you, is that people just jump ahead and try to start animating directly in here. You don't want to animate your stationary robot. You always want something to be stationary because say that you're gonna make him walk or dance, eventually you're probably gonna need that same robot at the same size with the same exact features to just stop. So you always wanna keep a copy of your stationary robot, okay? I'm just gonna go back to the scene, all right? This is the stationary robot. We're just on the main timeline where you animate everything. What you wanna do is this stationary robot here, you want to duplicate it. To do that, you just right click it and duplicate it. And the reason that we're duplicating is so that we can keep a copy of the robot with all its parts in the exact same place that we want them, color, size, everything, but we want to keep him stationary here and then have one that we can animate. But that way when we want him to be walking, we can use the animated one and when we want him to be stationary, we can just swap it with the image that's stationary. So I'm gonna go ahead and call this one instead of stationary, I'm gonna call it dancing. And I'm gonna leave it as a graphic clip. And I want it as a graphic clip because I want things, the animations that are nested to preview when I put it on my scene. If I do a movie clip, remember, movie clips don't preview the animation that's nested within it unless you publish the file. And because I'm not doing anything else to it, like I'm not gonna code it to do something special with 
um, action script and I'm not going to run a filter on this particular layer, or at least I'm not going to right now. I'm just going to keep it as a graphic clip. I can always change the instance of it to a movie clip. As you'll see, we can do when we run filters in another lesson. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and hit okay. And now what we have is we have a robot stationary. I'm going to go ahead and double click it so we can see the timeline. We have a robot dancing, which actually looks exactly the same. It doesn't even look like anything changed, but we know we're in it because it says robot dancing here. Okay. And this one is the one that we're going to animate. And when we animate, we're going to use the same principles as we did when we animate on the timeline. You do the exact same thing, the motion tweens, the transforming, the rotating, all of that you can do in here. You can build layers and everything. Okay. The key to this is, is that we're not going to be animating a bunch of different like people or different objects. We're just going to be animating the parts of this. Okay. So to do that, all of these things we said, we've already converted into symbols because when we did that to the stationary item and then duplicated that stationary item, we automatically inherited all of those symbols into our robot dancing. Okay. So we have all of the parts here, they're symbols. We see the little crosshairs. Everything is great. Okay. What I'm going to do is in order to animate these things, remember, if you want to animate several things at the same time, every symbol needs to be on its own separate layer. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to select all the objects and with all the objects selected, right click this. Okay. And we're going to say distribute to layers. Notice everything is selected. I selected it first and now I'm going to go to distribute to layers. Okay. And what it'll do is because I named my symbols, when I distribute to layers, it distributes all of these symbols onto its own layers. And notice now robot is empty. It's no longer great. It doesn't have anything inside of it. So we could actually throw away that item. Okay. And now we're left with all these body parts. You'll notice as I click on them, it selects those body parts. Okay. So now we can manually animate all of these pieces. So what I like to do, because I know that all of these are going to be visible for the same amount of time. I'm just going to go ahead and select here and highlight all the way down here. And then I'm going to do a right click and I'm going to go insert frame. And that basically just extends my timeline. Now they're visible for that long. Okay. They're not animated yet. So what I want to do is I'm just going to go ahead and select all of these. Okay. And I'm going to go right click and I'm going to go create motion tween. Okay. And I just highlighted here. You could highlight anywhere. It doesn't matter as long as you highlight somewhere on all of these, so you can just right click and it'll apply the motion tween to all of them. You could do it manually each, but who wants to do that? Right. All right. So that being said, all of these are now visible for 24 seconds and they've been activated to have motion in them. So what I can do is I can go in here and now I can start manually moving these. Okay. One thing I want to do is right at the beginning. Okay. And this is one of those key steps. Make sure you take notes of this type of stuff, because even though it makes sense when you're watching it, you're going to forget key steps if you're not really taking notes. Okay. So we're going to go here to the beginning. I'm going to grab this object and I'm going to switch to my transform tool. Okay. The transform tool allows me to rotate things. Okay. So I'm going to change the pivot points to where I want this to rotate from. Okay. Just like if I wanted it to do this. Okay. Because if I don't switch that, let's say for here, and I start rotating, it's going to start doing this and it's going to not, it's going to let my hinge be on the wrong part. Okay. So I'm going to do undo that. So for all of these, what I want to go to all of these is right at the beginning. I want to change all of my hinge points. Okay. I want to do it there. This one isn't really going to move. I'm going to do it there. Well, actually over here where the foot is, I'm going to move this over here and I'm going to move this over here. I'll actually change it there. And all of these are going to have the hinge where I want it to move from. Okay. All right. So now all of them have been uh, changed. They're all activated and they're ready for me to move. Now I just want to tell it where I want it to go. So I'm going to grab this and I'm going to say, I want this leg to go up. Okay. I want this leg to go in and I'm just going in this particular point in time. I'm just kind of framing how I want it to look. Okay. All right. So basically we're just switching these things around. Okay. Notice my body is not nothing's going to happen to my body. So you have it like this. So right now from that point to that point, that's what it did. Okay. And then I just move some more time along and I'm going to say, I want this one to go this way. And I want this one to go this way. And I want to go this way, this one, this way. 
and this one this way. So now we have, it goes from there to there, there to there. And now what I wanted to do is basically go back to its original state at the end so that when it jumps to the beginning, it'll continue and there won't be such a long gap. So I'm going to go ahead and just move these back. Okay, and it doesn't have to be exact. Sometimes it's hard to get it right exactly lined up. But if it's pretty close, when the animation is happening, it's so fast, you won't even notice. So we're just going to go ahead and put it there. And we're going to go ahead and put it here. All right, pretty close. So now if we look at this and I hit return, and it would go back to the beginning, it would continue where it was at, go back to the beginning, and it'll just be very seamless because that is basically what we want nested animation to do. Loop. We want it to loop and repeat the process all over again. So in short, the reason that you create a nested animation is so that you only have to manually animate one, say, dancing cycle uh, for these short 24 frames of movement that then loop around when you use that symbol on the stage for a longer period of time than the original sequence length. Okay. So say that we want this robot to dance for 10 seconds on the stage. Uh, when we create the nested uh, animation, which holds only these 24 frames in this only one cycle that we created, um, it'll seamlessly repeat itself for those 10 seconds that we drag it onto the stage for, okay? Then basically we're saving ourselves the time and effort to manually have to animate 10 whole seconds of animation, okay, of this dancing sequence over and over and over again on the timeline because it's already nested in the animation and automatically knows to, to loop, okay? And we make it seamless by making the end frame match the first frame of this nested animation we have here. All right. So you can preview the animation either by scrubbing or hitting your return key, just like in a normal animation. But remember, all of this nested animation is happening in robot dancing. So now, notice if I go to stationary symbol, that one doesn't have that little preview button. If we go to robot, you can preview it here as well. Okay. Now I'm going to go back to the main scene. Right now we currently had the main robot that's just the stationary one. That's the one we originally created. And so if we span across him, he, nothing is happening with him. If we do a robot dancing, we're just going to create a new layer for him. He's just going to be right here. And now when we do this, as long as he's there for 24 frames, He's going to play out and then he's going to start repeating again. And there's, it's seamless where it repeats because we made sure to end it in the nested animation the way that it looked when it started in the animation, okay? But notice here because it ends before the 48 frames, he doesn't return to his original state. So we want to make sure to extend this. I'm going to hold down command on my Mac here. On PCs it should just work and I'm going to go to 48 frames and then there it returns back to normal, okay? I'm going to go ahead and extend this one as well. All right, so there we have it. Now, if you want this to animate uh, with that nested animation, but also move across the stage only once, you know, just move once, not to keep looping around, then what you would do is you'd create another layer here, and you'd say, like, robot dancing, panning across, or gliding across, or whatever. And in this one, you would grab your robot that's dancing, and then right now it's just visible here, okay, just like that other one is. But here you would just right click, create a motion tween, go to the end of your animation, tell it where you want to go, and just animate it like normal. So there you have it, okay? Remember, you could also decide to make it become smaller at that keyframe or whatever. I'm going to hold down and shrink it using my transform tool. Notice it also shrinks, okay? So it holds that nested animation. All right, so this concludes your lesson on nested animations. Hopefully you get a good sense. If you're stuck, if you don't understand because this is a requirement for the project, make sure that you contact me, okay? Good luck.